Hi, I'm Dr. Richard Abbey. I show parents of children suffering from ADHD what to do so their children don't have to suffer anymore. And today I'm going to tell you about the true causes of ADHD so you can get this right. And if you get this right, you're going to know exactly what to do to help your child overcome this painful problem. This painful problem that could potentially haunt them the rest of their lives. Armed with this information, you'll know what the cause is so you can get to doing something about it and then they don't have to suffer today, tomorrow, or for the rest of their lives and you don't have to worry about them anymore. So I think it's very important to come to terms with the true cause of ADHD. It's not a disorder you can't do anything about. That's the old way of thinking. Here's the paradigm shift. Your child's brain is about 20 to 30% immature in terms of the attention networks and the executive functions. It's lagging behind, it's stagnating, and it won't catch up unless you know what to do about it. So if you look at the current literature, it's very clear. 20 to 30% behind, what are we gonna do about that? Well, there's, you know, the traditional way, medication. Medication does not mature your child's brain. So while that's a temporary solution like a Band-Aid, maybe that can help us overcome some short-term obstacles. That's not gonna get us to where we need to be. That is not gonna reduce their risk factors of alcoholism or self-medication, like these very, the very powerful marijuana these days. A whole host of things that, you know, getting buried in YouTube because left untreated over time, guess what happens? Children become anxious, they become depressed, they become defeated because they're continually getting these constant messages of, you're not trying hard enough. If only you would try harder, you're too lazy. Why didn't you turn this homework assignment in? From their teachers, from their peers, you know, all these things. And they start questioning. They start to feel incompetent and less than. So if we can capture this early enough, I get super excited when I get to work with a five-year-old or eight-year-old or even 10-year-old because they care so much about what their parents think about them. They're still trying to please their parent to some degree. When they become teenagers, we tend to lose them because they're so concerned and caught up with pleasing their peers. It starts to get a little late and we start to lose them. I just talked to a client the other day. There's very little hope for change in this child. And maybe they will change when they come to their own conclusion, but now they're 18 years old. They're going off to college and they're headed for a total train wreck because they, can't, they could barely keep it together to pass high school. Their executive functions are down. They can't plan, execute, focus, and pay attention. I've done this enough. I've been around long enough. I've seen the research. I can predict with absolute certainty where this child's fate is going, and it's not good. But when I see a child, a young child, and I get to work with them at a very early age, and I get to help change their lives forever, that's exciting because they don't get these negative messages. They don't get anxious because they have a whole lifelong history of being able to achieve and do well. So ideally, if I get a child at five or six or seven or eight years old, voila, it's awesome. I'm not saying it's not hard work. I'm not saying there's not a journey to go through, but I'm saying in the short term, and if we can get you know the short term over the next eight to 12 months, to exponentially change their lives forever. It's so worth it. Do we want a Tesla, a new pool? Do we want to give our child an upgraded brain chip so they can be happy? You don't have to worry about them. They don't have to move into your basement because they can't go off to college or be successful in life. Nobody generally chooses to do medication the rest of their lives. It helps only a little bit. So if we can come to terms with this being a brain-based problem, it's not a disease, it's not a disorder, it's a problem of immaturity. Can we mature the child's brain with modern technology? Yes, we can. If you're interested in learning more about that, check my next video out. I'm gonna tell you all about the ways in which you can do this with modern technology through our proven system. And it's not just our system, there's centers all over the world. So if you can come to terms with this actual problem of brain immaturity, stagnation in your child, and it's not gonna be overcome with medication. Medication is in and out of your system. Once it's out, there's no therapeutic value. It's gotta be in your system. 
So if you don't want to sign your child up for a lifetime usage of medication, if you're interested in learning how to grow your child's brain very quickly over the next eight, 10 months, click on the next video. I'm going to tell you all about that.